แล้วเพราะฉะนั้นโอเคแล้วจังเกียวมันจะตรงนี้จังตรงที่ข้าลายโบกันอ่าลายโบกันเอาเพราะฉะนั้นเอสกูมาไปแชทกูพูดเลยตรงนี้สมัยออดิบอลและนี่จะสตรีมวิสิบอลบัตรตัวอาเกะเล็กๆมุดเด็กบัตรชุ่มก็อ่านเสียงนี่อาระอาเรียนที่ไหนอาเรียนที่ไหนก็ชอบอาเรียนที่ไหนแต่ตอนนี้ตอนนี้ตอนนี้ตอนนี้ตอนนี้ตอนนี้ตอนนี้ตอนนี้ตอนนี้ตอนนี้ตอนนี้ตอนนี้ตอนนี้ตอนนี้ตอนนี้ตอนนี้ตอนนี้ตอนนี้ตอนนี้ตอนนี้ตอนนี้ตอนนี้ตอนนี้ตอนนี้ตอนนี้ตอนนี้ตอนนี้ตอนนี้ตอนนี้ตอนนี้ตอนนี้ตอนนี้ตอนนี้ตอนนี้ตอนนี้ตอนนี้ตอนนี้ตอนนี้ตอนนี้ตอนนี้ตอนนี้ตอนนี้ตอนนี้ตอนนี้ตอนนี้ตอนนี้ตอนนี้ตอนนี้ตอนนี้ตอนนี้ตอนนี้ตอนนี้ตอนนี้ตอนนี้ตอนนี้ตอนนี้ตอนนี้ตอนนี้ตอนนี้ตอนนี้ตอนนี้ตอนนี้ตอนนี้ตอนนี้
has got chief cells fine now chief cells are the cells which predominantly secrete pepsinogen and keep on looking at your uh, queries if there is any problem because you know i have to keep on looking at this sheet as of now because uh, we don't have the luxury of a good setup available as of now fine chief cell chief cell fine then the parietal cells so they are mainly responsible for secreting acid mainly responsible for secreting acid fine then we have endocrine cells then we have endocrine cells for example g cells they will secrete gastrin they will secrete gastrin fine t cells they will secrete somatostatin fine and ecl ecl means entero chromaffin like entero chromaffin like cells fine and you know from your knowledge of anatomy and physiology that they are going to produce histamine they're going to produce histamine fine we check if everything is clear and visible it is visible but then there is some lag there is some lag what i'll do is i'll switch off all other devices and uh, then maybe the internet speed will improve so though i'm having very good internet speed over here let me just check this is very well secure okay fine very well secure now so moving forward so see these are the lymphatic drainage i told you yesterday also i'm in the last class that this is the long axis and they are arranged perpendicularly they are arranged perpendicularly i mean lymphatics they are transversely lined transversely line transversely line now you see the crisscross arrangement of musculature that is required for churning of the food that is required for churning of the food and this musculature you see arranged is arranged in the form of sphincter is arranged in the form of a sphincter called pyloric sphincter called pyloric sphincter fine now you see this is the lesser sac this is the greater omentum this is the greater omentum and remember this is the hepato duodenal ligament what is the purpose what is the purpose the purpose is that uh, we, we can press this ligament if there is bleeding from the liver bleeding from the liver fine now this foramen this is also important as a part of surgical anatomy epiploic epiploic foramen which is thank you thank you which is also called foramen of winslow foramen of winslow right foramen of winslow now you see what is the significance of the blood supply what is the significance of this blood supply i want you to notice two arteries arteries there i want you to notice two arteries there one is the gastro duodenal artery gastro duodenal artery fine now second is the splenic artery splenic artery what is the significance now you see whenever we have a bit too much to eat whenever we have a bit too much to eat we feel slight discomfort we feel slight discomfort in the left hypochondrium that is because splenic artery is being compressed splenic artery is being compressed fine now the second thing you notice the gastro duodenal artery gastro duodenal artery let me draw this see it is going like this it's going like this fine going like this and then it goes on to become the superior pancreatico duodenal artery superior pancreatico duodenal artery now this artery is going to bleed if there is peptic ulcer other thing which you can see other thing which you can see is that it has got very rich arterial network very rich arterial network so even if one or two arteries of the stomach are cut fine the other arteries can easily take over other arteries can easily take over just imagine that as a part of bariatric surgery weight loss surgery we do cut this much part of the stomach fine we do cut this much part of the stomach that is sleeve gastrectomy in this case the blood supply will proceed from these arteries 
So the point I'm trying to convey is that if you want to cut any of the stomach arteries, you can safely cut it and it is not going to cause any harm. It's not going to cause any harm, right? Now, another thing about the relevant surgical anatomy is the vagus nerve, which is the chief nerve supply to the stomach. And you know from your knowledge of anatomy, what is the mnemonic? Mnemonic is LARP. Left branch of the vagus nerve is anterior, while the right branch of the vagus nerve is posterior. Right branch of the vagus nerve is posterior. Fine. I want you to take a note of this nerve. I want you to take a note of this nerve. Fine. Which nerve? The criminal nerve of Grassi. Why is it called criminal? You will come to know. Fine. The criminal nerve of Grassi. We also call that as CNG. Criminal nerve of Grassi. Fine. The second thing which I want you to take note of is this. Crow's foot. Like crow's foot. Now these are called the nerves of latar jet. Nerves of latar jet. From your knowledge of anatomy and your knowledge of physiology, you know what kind of nerve is vagus nerve. So vagus nerve, you know, is secretomotor. Secretomotor. Fine. Secretomotor. So whenever your patient is eating food, fine. The secreto part of the vagus nerve, which is a parasympathetic nerve, that will cause increased secretion of the acid. That will cause increased secretion of the acid. Fine. Whereas these nerves, the nerve of latar jet, they will cause opening of the stomach. They will cause opening of the stomach pylorus so that the food can pass on forward. So that the food can pass on forward. Fine. So this nerve supply is extremely important. Is extremely important. Fine. So now we start with the first disorder. We start with the first disorder. Fine. Sometimes it is erroneously, erroneously mentioned as congenital hypertrophic pyloric stenosis, but we better call it as infantile. hypertrophic pyloric stenosis infantile hypertrophic pyloric stenosis fine now why don't we call it congenital because the child is normal at birth and the disorder appears at two to three weeks of age it is common in first born males common in the first born males first born males fine now it is why this chat is not viewing up. Okay, so it is common in firstborn males. Fine. So the disease is associated with Hirschsprung disease. It is sometimes associated with esophageal atresia. Esophageal atresia. Now the question which they ask, question which they ask, it is associated with maternal erythromycin intake. Maternal erythromycin intake. Maternal erythromycin intake. Fine, you see here now. So this is the normal one and this is the hypertrophied pylorus. Hypertrophied pylorus because the pylorus has become very, very thick. It will not allow, it will not allow the food to leave. It will not allow the food to enter into the duodenum. Food to enter into the duodenum. So there are several P's. There are several P's. Fine. We'll see to it. We'll see to it. What are the several P's? What are the several P's? Fine, you see, this part is hypertrophic. This part is hypertrophic. Fine, you see here. Abnormally thick. Abnormally thick. Fine. Normally thick. So, because the food is not able to pass. Fine. So, the clinical feature will be projectile.
non bilious vomiting projectile non bilious vomiting next because the child won't gain weight child won't get won't gain weight fine so there will be visible gastric peristalsis because the abdominal wall is very very thin abdominal wall is very very thin fine now there is palpable mass now this palpable mass is called abdominal olive fine now this abdominal olive is felt by the surgeon at the time of feeding felt by the surgeon at the time of feeding fine and if the surgeon can feed it fine so this makes the diagnosis this clinches the diagnosis this clinches the diagnosis fine now this clinches the diagnosis sometimes your patient may land up into complications your patient may land up into complications just understand it like this because your patient is losing gastric juice fine so your patient will develop hypokalemia hypokalemia fine your patient is losing acid so your patient will develop hypochloremia see this is what your patient is losing fine this is what your patient is losing because your patient is losing acid also so there will be metabolic alkalosis there will be metabolic alkalosis this much is clearly understandable i believe fine but what we may miss sometime is see the kidneys they try to compensate kidneys they try to compensate you see by now we know that our patient is in metabolic alkalosis kidney says don't worry i'm here so what will the kidneys try to do let me see if i have visible on the screen or not fine let me just show it here because this might hide behind me fine so kidneys what will they do they will try to secrete the bicarbonate out they will try to secrete the bicarbonate out fine now when the kidneys are about to secrete bicarbonate out sodium also accompanies sodium also accompanies fine body says body says this is a double loss body says this is a double loss i cannot allow the sodium to go fine so body tries to preserve the sodium body tries to preserve the sodium fine so instead of sodium body throws out h positive ions you know both have got positive charge body throws out potassium body throws out potassium fine body throws out potassium so there will be paradoxical means against the rules means against what is expected so there will be paradoxical acid urea there will be paradoxical acid urea guys just give me a second Just give me a second. Why is the live chat not getting? Now it's updated. Rajasthani Munda ji, yes, of course, I'll request. I'll request. I'll request, sir. Fine. Uh, actually, the problem is those guys, they are super busy. So uh, this, this PDF, I can do it by myself because that is there in my system only. Fine. So there will be hypokalemic. hypochloremic metabolic alkalosis with paradoxical acid urea with paradoxical acid urea with paradoxical acid urea fine now 
you see here these are the dimensions these are the dimensions of the pylorus these are the dimensions of the pylorus pylorus so pyloric length pyloric length screen went off nobody pyloric length will be more than 16 millimeter this is what we see on the ultrasound this what we see on the ultrasound fine this diameter will be 14 mm or more this diameter will be 14 mm or more this thickness this thickness will be 4 mm or more this thickness will be 4 mm or more now many of you must be using this uh, live session so i'm using this on my mobile can any one of you please tell me how do i keep it on all the time because you know after a while my screen goes blank and then i have to switch it on again then i have to switch it on again now speaking about the treatment treatment so this is not a surgical emergency but but the correction correction of electrolyte imbalance is a surgical emergency is an emergency is an emergency is an emergency so what is the treatment treatment is Ramstead extra mucosa pyloromyotomy now they ask you a question that uh, they ask you a question that uh, if they uh, if you did cut the mucosa by any chance if you did cut the mucosa by any chance fine suppose you did cut the mucosa you don't have to cut the mucosa but by mistake suppose the mucosa is cut then what you have to do is you have to cover it with a patch of omentum with the patch of omentum Thank you KSRG, but you know after a while my screen goes blank. I want to see your comments. So, okay increase the screen time. I don't have this option available. Just have the playback speed option. Okay, I'll just keep on touching this. Don't worry. I'll keep on touching this. Right. <laughs> Sub changas, yes, I know. So if you by by mistake, if you cut the mucosa, what you have to do is you have to cover it with a patch of omentum. You just have to cover it with a patch of omentum. Fine. And you should withhold the feeding for 36 hours. 36 hours. Fine. You see here. This is what you want. You want to cut the muscle layer, but you don't want to cut the mucosa. You don't want to cut the mucosa fine you don't want to cut the mucosa right now this is a newer approach that is balloon dilatation that is balloon dilatation that is a non-surgical method neha sharma beta ji we have to talk we have to talk to sir for that right i mean that is his prerogative phone settings okay 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 just give me a second just give me a second just give me a second screen time okay these are the tricks which you learn like how to avoid the teacher in the online classes now i know oh yeah so next time i'll do the proper setting next time i'll do the proper setting okay fine now we move to the next topic we move to the next topic that is the topic of uh, peptic ulcer disease peptic ulcer disease <laughs> you call me i'll be there anytime i'll be there anytime by the way i hope everyone is safe over there fine peptic ulcer the first moment I came to know about that, I immediately call up your guys. I immediately called up your coordinator to check if all of us are safe. And uh, I mean, I cannot say that I was glad to know, but then at least I was at least relieved to know. 
find that every one of us is safe fine so acute ulcers acute ulcers for example cushing ulcers cushing ulcers fine cushing ulcers they occur in head injury fine curling ulcers curling ulcers they occur in burns now they are acute ulcer now we are seeing the chronic peptic ulcers chronic peptic ulcers they can occur either in yeah yeah, yeah. they can occur either in uh, duodenum or the stomach but the most common site is first 2.5 centimeter of the duodenum because that is the area that is the area which faces the acid that is the area which faces the acid now let me see let me just show you what are the difference between ulcers in the duodenum and ulcers in the stomach ulcers in the stomach you see frankly speaking and you know uh, i mean speaking in uh, speaking in uh, hardcore terms duodenal ulcers are because of increased acid stomach ulcers they are because of decreased uh, decrease mucus decrease mucosal defenses against the acid so in duodenal ulcer there will be increased acid production there will be increased acid production there will be increased acid production <laughs> no, sort of no <laughs> concise class already we have too little time so that, that there's always a there's always a time to crack joke you have my number now so we can always crack jokes over there and it's already eight eight o'clock fine and eight o'clock i'm teaching rather than doing something else that itself is a joke fine increased acid production fine so there will be decreased mucosal defense fine acid production is either normal or maybe even decreased or it may be even decreased or it may be even decreased fine in maybe even decrease so patient has pain patient has pain at the gastrium but this pain is relieved the pain is relieved when the patient eats something when the patient eats something this pain is relieved because now the acid will be busy digesting the food it won't cause any harm to the ulcer now let's say there is an ulcer over here fine now there is too much of acid there is too much of acid which is busy irritating this ulcer now suppose the food comes suppose the food comes what will the acid do what will the acid do now acid will say okay let's digest the food first let's digest the food first fine now once the ulcer is done digesting the food then it may come again one the acid once the acid is done digesting the food then it may come again so you see after your patient eats the food the acid will be busy digesting the food and it will stop harming the ulcer it will stop harming the ulcer fine so pain in the epigastrium and naturally this will increase this will increase when the patient eats something when the patient eats something so we expect this patient will experience weight gain fine this patient will experience weight loss this patient will experience weight loss fine weight gain and weight loss right now in this patient that is a duodenal ulcer that is the duodenal ulcer treatment is aimed at I mean, we are talking about the surgical treatment. Treatment is aimed at decreasing the acid production, decreasing the acid production. Treatment, surgical treatment we are talking about. Treatment is aimed at removing, treatment is aimed at removing the area, removing the area of ulcer we cut the part of the stomach which has got ulcer why is this so because this ulcer practically 
never turns malignant never turns malignant so this has got chances of malignancy this has got chances of malignancy this ulcer has got chances of malignancy <laughs> So no matter, uh, we use normal saline, we use normal saline, we use normal saline as a fluid, we use normal saline as a fluid to correct the metabolic complication, to correct the metabolic complications. It is not atresia, it is stenosis, rather there is, you know, uh, Hyperplasia, hyperplasia, fine. Hyperplasia. Now, so blood group O is for blood group A patients are more prone to develop peptic ulcer. Blood group A patients are more prone to develop gastric cancer, more prone to develop gastric cancer, gastric cancers. Fine gastric cancers right now what can cause what what are the causes of peptic ulcer what are the causes of peptic ulcer fine now more causes these were the genetic causes so h pylori remains the most important cause especially in the developing countries especially in the developing countries right we can also say non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs alcohol smoking alcohol smoking fine stress Zollinger so Ellison syndrome. Zollinger so Ellison syndrome. Fine. And believe it or not, cocaine. Cocaine. Fine. Hyper. Parathyroidism. Hyper. Parathyroidism. So, no matter say thank to Spartan. <laughs> say thank to Spartan, not to me. Spartan, thanks, buddy. Fine. Now, okay. Now we move to the treatment part. So, drug of choice here is proton pump inhibitor. Drug of choice here is proton pump inhibitor. Also, we can use sucralafate. Also, we can use sucralafate. Fine. So, this is Zollinger Ellison syndrome. Zollinger Ellison syndrome that means when the patient has multiple tumors, multiple tumors secreting gastrin. Fine, multiple tumor secreting gastrin. Fine, so they are present in the Zaro triangle. They are present in the Zaro triangle. Zaro triangle. Fine, Zaro triangle. Right. See, Zaro triangle, which is also known as gastrinoma triangle. Gastrinoma triangle. Fine, gastrinoma triangle. Let me see. Zaro triangle known as gastrinoma triangle. Just a minute, I was just wanted to show you some more things there. Yeah, so we wanted to check what kind of ulcer, what kind of gastric ulcers are present, what are the different type of gastric ulcer. So you can very well correlate here. Number one means the most common number one means the most common so these ulcers they are present on the lesser curvature near the antrum near the antrum most common number one fine then the type 2 type 2 will be combined gastric and duodenal ulcer so that means there are two ulcers that means there are two ulcers there are two ulcers 
fine type 3 so type 3 are the ulcers present in the pre pyloric region pre pyloric region just try to understand but before that we first write we first write fine i forgot to mention this so i'm mentioning it again what the gastric ulcers gastric ulcers type 1 type 1 are the most common so they are present near the lesser curvature they are present on the lesser curvature near the pyloric antrum near the pyloric antrum fine so they are most common they are most common now type 2 so type 2 in this type 2 there will be two ulcers you can see over here there will be two ulcer one in the stomach second in the duodenum fine from your knowledge of anatomy you people know duodenum has got pruner's gland fine even then there has developed an ulcer even then there has developed an ulcer even then there has developed an ulcer fine so that means here in this part acid production will be high acid production will be high acid production will be high fine acid production will be high now we move to the type 3 so you see type 3 ulcers they are present in the pre pyloric region let me just erase all the ink so they are present in the pre pyloric region now the logic here logic here Logic here is that you see in the pre pyloric region where the cursor of my mouse is at present where the cursor of my mouse is fine. Now you can see that in this region the stomach suddenly has become very very narrow stomach suddenly has become very very narrow. So that means here the ulcer here the acid will be moving here the acid will be moving with a force here the acid will be moving with a force. Just a second. the acid will be moving with the force now you see there is so much air around but even then i'm feeling what because the air is not moving properly because of the curtain here because of the curtain here now moving acid acid if it is moving swiftly it becomes a force so it is going to scrape it is going to scrape the wall it is going to scrape the wall fine it is going to scrape the wall now if it is going to scrape the wall fine that means so type 3 are the ulcers which are present in the pre pyloric region fine so that means there is increase acid production there is increased acid production there is increased acid production just a second here It's not that I'm learning this setup, but the problem is this live class we have hold, uh, we have held for the first time over here, and you know, uh, well, we did it uh, sometimes before also, but at that time the students they were not so demanding there. So nevertheless, fine. Pre pyloric region acid production is high. Fine. Now we talk to the next thing there. That is the type four type 4 fine so type 4 are the ulcer you see here they are also present on the lesser curvature fine but they are present high up they are present high up now they are present in a region which is known to produce mu mucus fine so that means there will be decreased mucus production decreased mucus production so they occur near gastric Gastroesophageal junction. Gastroesophageal junction. We also have type 5 ulcers. We also have type 5 ulcers. That means which are associated with NSAIDs use, non steroid anti inflammatory 
drug use non steroidal anti inflammatory drugs use fine now we move to the surgical treatment now we move to the surgical treatment after that we'll read the complication of the ulcers then we read the complication of the surgical treatment we'll read the complication of the surgical treatment also so first we see the surgical treatment of duodenal ulcer fine preferred surgical treatment is highly selective pegotomy just give me a minute i'll just show you what i'm trying to say here fine so highly selective pegotomy highly selective pegotomy these red arrows these red arrows these are the part which we will cut small red arrows that means the nerve supply only to the acid producing area will be cut only to the acid pro producing area will be cut what do we want to preserve over here what do we want to preserve over here we want to preserve the nerve of latar jet fine so that the pylorus can open pylorus can open whenever the food comes pylorus can open whenever the food comes fine highly selective egotomy it is done to reduce the acid production it is done to reduce the acid production fine highly selective egotomy is done to reduce the acid production here criminal nerve of grassi can cause failure why because we may not identify it and this may not be cut this may not be cut nerve of latar jet is deliberately preserved nerve of latar jet is deliberately preserved deliberately preserved fine what is the treatment of recurrent peptic ulcer that means even if you have done the vagotomy even then even then the ulcers they appear so in this case the treatment will be truncal vagotomy now you see here once you do the truncal vagotomy once you do the truncal vagotomy fine if now what will happen the pylorus won't open pylorus won't open why because let's say these were the nerves to the pylorus fine these were the nerves to the pylorus one which i have shaded yellow these were the nerves to the pylorus now you did cut from here you did cut from here you did cut from here let's cut it did cut from here now the pylorus won't open up pylorus won't open up agreed that the asset supply will be vastly decreased fine but the pylorus won't open now you need to have either of the two options you need to have either of the two options what one is you can do we can do gastro jejunostomy we can do gastro jejunostomy so that the digested food see it is closed so that the digested food can ultimately pass on to the jejunum can ultimately pass on to the jejunum fine other is you can cut the pyloric antrum all together you can cut the pyloric antrum all together fine you do cut this area which is shaded you do cut this area which is shaded fine so that means double benefit now even the hormone producing area is gone even the hormone producing area is gone so this surgery is called truncal vagotomy that means to cut the main trunk of the vagus nerve truncal vagotomy plus anterectomy plus anterectomy fine truncal vagotomy plus anterectomy that is a surgery which we are going to perform if there are recurrent acids if there are recurrent peptic ulcer if there are recurrent peptic ulcers fine now for the stomach ulcer for the stomach ulcers this is the treatment just show you see we can do either bilroth 1 bilroth 1 
fine so bilroth 1 gastrectomy in the bilroth 1 gastrectomy this is the area which we'll be doing so that means it is practically similar to removing the antrum practically similar to re uh, removing the antrum now the second thing which we can do is bilroth 2 gastrectomy bilroth 2 gastrectomy so what is bilroth 2 gastrectomy we will be doing side by side anastomosis of stomach with the jejunum side by side anastomosis of stomach with the jejunum now here we are doing end to end anastomosis we are doing end to end anastomosis fine end to end anastomosis of the stomach with the remaining duodenum right Belleroth 1, Belleroth 2. You see, they are compared side by side. They are compared side by side. Fine. Belleroth 1 and Belleroth 2. So, these are the surgeries for uh, peptic ulcer when it is gastric. Fine. Now, you see, these are the named procedures. These are the named procedures. Named procedures for gastric ulcer surgeries. You don't need to go into the details. You don't need to go into the details. I mean, they are important for neat PG, but they are not important for FMG right now we move to the next thing we move to the next thing that is the complications see ulcers is a long topic complications fine now what are the complications what are the complications so first complication is bleeding which is considered most common cause of ulcer related death this is considered most common cause of ulcer related death ulcer related death and most of the time it is managed conservatively it is managed conservatively it is managed conservatively fine now bleeding is more common in duodenal ulcer bleeding is more common in duodenal ulcer remember i told you about the gastro duodenal artery fine now perforation perforation so most of the stomach uh, ulcers they perforate i mean if they develop complication perforation will be the most common complication of gastric ulcer most common complication of gastric ulcer fine but make sure make no mistake that for the perforation most common site is first part of duodenum first part of duodenum that is the most common site for perforation as well as for bleeding so it is said that anterior ulcers perforate fine and posterior ulcers they bleed posterior ulcers they bleed posterior ulcers they bleed fine the third complication is obstruction to the flow of the stomach now let's say that there is an ulcer over here because of ulcer there will be massive edema so this edema can block the flow of blood secondly because of a long standing ulcer there could be cicatrization that means there could be scarring that can also block the flow of blood fourth complication is your patient can develop deformities for example let's say there is a peptic ulcer fine and suppose the peptic ulcer it extends like this it extends like this extends like this fine now what do we expect over here what do we expect over here like this fine so this will develop a t pot deformity tea pot deformity because because of the scarring there will be contracture t pot deformity now suppose you know in the concise classes naturally we have to be slightly fast now you see here if there is an ulcer over the anterior wall if there is an ulcer over the posterior wall so what will happen after a while the deformity would be like this deformity would be like this fine so deformity would be like this this type of stomach is called our 
glass stomach our glass stomach what are the complications i mean how will the patient present how will the patient of our glass stomach present so he will present or sorry it is never he it is always she fine so this is common in females fine so this patient will present with early satiety he she will say that i am full i am full fine i am full now next are malignant conversion next complication is malignant conversion so this definitely also occurs in gastric ulcer this definitely occurs in gastric ulcer gastric ulcer fine now we see what are the complications of we see what are the complications of surgeries what are the complications of the surgeries which we did surgeries which we did fine first which i told you already what that incomplete vagotomy incomplete vagotomy is a complication incomplete vagotomy is a complication fine then small stomach remnant small stomach remnant fine your patient can develop bile vomiting you see here i mean it is naturally expected that this patient can vomit bile this patient can vomit bile here also this patient can vomit bile fine so bile vomiting next because you see here that if you do this surgery if you do this surgery the bellerox 2 duodenum is practically ruled out from the food chain fine so that means your patient might develop hypocalcemia which may cause increase parathyroid hormone increase parathyroid hormone now this hypocalcemia is transient transient enough to cause parathyroid hormone but practically the clinical features of hypocalcemia don't develop because that will cause increase in the parathyroid hormone levels fine and parathyroid hormone will say okay okay don't you don't have to worry i'll make everything normal fine now the main complication which you need to study over here is the dumping syndrome is the dumping syndrome let's say this is the normal physiology this is the normal way the food travel food will come here stay here for a while fine then slowly slowly it will move to the duodenum fine now in the duodenum you see the food will be diluted by bile both hepatic bile and pancreatic bile fine here also the food is being diluted by acid and mucus fine ultimately this diluted food reaches the jejunum reaches the jejunum but let's say you have performed gastrojejunostomy let's say you have performed gastrojejunostomy fine now what will happen what will happen if you have performed gastrojejunostomy if you have performed gastrojejunostomy fine concentrated food will enter into the jejunum concentrated food enters into the jejunum enters into the jejunum now because the concentrated food is entering into the jet just a second because the concentrated food is entering into the jejunum fine what it will do it will suck practically it will suck all the water it will suck all the water fine from the wall of the jejunum from the wall of the jejunum so we can say fine your patient will develop hypovolemia hypovolemia because where will the water come from from the walls of the jejunum where will the water come from from the walls of the jejunum what from what thing from the blood vessels that means the water will practically come out from the blood fine so your patient will develop your patient will develop 
hypovolemia your patient will develop hypovolemia so practically your patient will present with epigastric fullness your patient present with epigastric fullness light headedness light headedness after a meal light headedness after a meal light headedness after a meal fine now what are the things which you can do you can give your patient small i mean you can advise your patient you're not going to cook the food for him small but frequent meals no liquids with the meals no liquid with the meal because you know if you give liquid that will increase the transit time if you give semi solid food the food will immediately enter the jejunum if you give solid food for food will stay in the stomach for some time at least but if you give semi solid food food will immediately enter into the jejunum fine next is you can do you can give your patient octreotide that will slow down the, the transit of the food next is the surgical treatment that means you can convert you can convert bilirot to to bilirot 1 you can convert bilirot 2 to bilirot 1 you see here Bilroth 1 seems more physiological, seems more physiological because the food will at least be diluted by the pancreatic and the hepatic bile, right? Pancreatic and the hepatic bile. Now you see, I have got an image also for this. See here, the dumping syndrome. Hyper or smaller food is entering the jejunum, fine, is entering the jejunum right now what happens in late dumping so late dumping will present two to three hours after a meal two to three hours after a meal fine so suddenly what will happen there will be increased glucose content fine now because of increased glucose content there will be increased insulin fine that means first your patient will develop hyperglycemia second your patient will develop hypoglycemia due to increased insulin due to increased insulin so the symptoms here will be less dramatic symptom here will be less dramatic symptom here will be less dramatic symptom here will be less dramatic fine the next complication is post vagotomy diarrhea post vagotomy diarrhea fine so after vagotomy what will happen is what will happen after vagotomy that all kind of bacteria they will start to grow because there is no acid to kill them now or at least there is decreased acid to kill them right decreased acid to kill them now because of this all the bacteria will grow and then there are increased chances of malignant conversion because bacteria they will come with toxin bacteria they will come with toxin i mean bacteria will be releasing so many of the toxin bacteria will be releasing so many of the toxins fine there will be iron deficiency anemia fine because most of the iron is not absorbed uh, without acid fine now vitamin b12 deficiency my chat is not getting refreshed and if you are asking any questions i'll miss it spartan bro please send me a message so that i know that you are there saurabh ji pradyut ji sonam beta please send me a message lucky 55 please send me a message so that i know that you guys are there
So you see saddle shaped ulcer, it is going to give rise to hourglass deformity, hourglass deformity. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Just wanted to confirm whether you guys are there or not because you know my chat feed was not refreshing. Yo, yo. <laughs> now you see, this is the teapot stomach, teapot stomach. Teapot stomach. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Now, you see, mentarier disease, mentarier disease. Thank you. Thank you so much, buddy. Mentarier disease. Fine. So, this is also known as... hypertrophic gastropathy hypertrophic gastropathy fine hypertrophic gastropathy so the important mcq question this is more common in the middle aged men more common in the middle aged men fine thank you thank you so there is epithelial hyperplasia there is epithelial hyperplasia and the development of giant gastric folds giant gastric fold so that means there is decreased absorptive area there is decreased absorptive area now this disease is mediated by tgf alpha tgf alpha fine tgf alpha fine so the causative factors are considered to be cytomegalovirus in children and H. pylori in adults. I mean, no clear cut causative factor, but these are just the suspect. These are just the suspect. Fine. Now, another MCQ question Entral sparing. Entral sparing is usually noticed. Usually noticed. <laughs> thank you thank, thank you so much buddy because you know uh, my brother uh, what was the name i forgot spartans he didn't like it so that's why you know i'm kind of worried nevertheless nevertheless but fine so the clinical features include protein loss enteropathy clinical feature include protein loss enteropathy treatment is either we can use cetuximab or we might have to resolve to gastrectomy gastrectomy if the protein loss enteropathy is severe if the protein loss enteropathy is severe so we might have to do gastrectomy we might have to do gastrectomy there fine we might have to do gastrectomy there fine now you'll see that in the next thing it is reverse next thing it is reverse. what is next thing that is the dilophoy lesion dilophoy lesion you see here dilophoy lesion right dilophoy lesion it is present near the cardia it is present near the cardia and there is massive bleeding usually there is massive bleeding usually so many screens open right in front of me dilophile lesion so there is dilate tortuous arteriole dilated tortuous arteriole just give me a second dilated tortuous arteriole which can cause bleeding and the patient may land up into hematomasis patient may land up into hematomasis so this is common in middle age 
or elderly men this is common in the middle age or elderly men treatment is endoscopic cauterization endoscopic cauterization endoscopic cauterization but yes 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 but uh, i don't know why why he didn't like it nevertheless when uh, really want to try but then no, you see here again here you know they are just going to ask you this image they are just going to ask you this image fine but the name itself says so many things what is that gastric antral vascular ectasia fine so what are there dilated venules dilated venules they are present in the antrum dilated venule they are present in the antrum so they are associated with collagen vascular disease like sle and rheumatoid arthritis most commonly they will cause melena see dilophil lesion was causing hematomasis this is going to cause melena this is going to cause melena so if we do endoscopy if we do endoscopy it is going to show you characteristic water melon stomach it is going to show characteristically water melon stomach so what are we going to do for this argon plasma laser coagulation argon plasma laser coagulation <laughs> thank you so much buddy thank you thank you thank you so this is dilophile lesion this is how it looks like most commonly found near the cardia most commonly found near the cardia we'll read this also but then uh, just give me a second see so now we are going to read we are going to start with this main topic we are going to start with this main topic that is a carcinoma stomach now there is a very loose correlation but uh, since we have started the process of refrigeration since we have started the process of refrigeration what has happened is that the incidence of carcinoma stomach is decreasing because now we are not doing any kind of refrigeration i mean we are doing but very less kind of you know pickling very less kind of pickling now we have uh, more of refrigeration and less of pickling fine so you see after refrigeration because of less pickling there is decreasing incidence of carcinoma stomach but <clears throat> because you know we are using chlorofluorocarbons in the refrigerators so there is a damage there is damage to the there is a damage to the you know ozone layer so the uh, you know the 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 incidence of melanoma is increasing incidence of melanoma is increasing at the same pace practically at the same pace practically at the same pace fine now this disease is more common in male that is more common in the middle age female uh, middle age male middle age male so what is the etiology etiology is h pylori etiology is h pylori fine thanks for those word pradyuman ji pradyuman ji fine but <laughs> i'm nowhere close to that but i'm actually striving just to give you my two cents whatever little i can do for you guys i'm really trying to do that only seriously i'm not into any kind of things like number game fine but uh, then so diet high in smoke foods high in smoke foods fine so there is diet high in the smoke foods fine starchy foods
salty foods fine now familial polyposis gastric adenoma and we just studied the gastric ulcer we just studied that the gastric ulcer gastric ulcer can also cause the development of malignancy so aspirin vitamin c aspirin vitamin c so they decrease the risk they decrease the risk guys just a second please i need to send a whatsapp message now you see here we are using two we are using two of the classification systems there we are using two of the classification system there fine you see here borman so borman is for macroscopic or we can say morphological classification morphological classification fine morphological classification fine now for example it is polypoid polypoid fine ulcerated ulcerated polypoid ulcerated right and then you see it has got both the element and type 4 is the shirus is the shirus one is the shirus one fine so there is entire stomach will be converted into leather bottle appearance leather bottle appearance what do you look for in the scenario based question they say after after uh, endoscopy after endoscopy suppose you are trying to deflate the stomach fine you are not able to open the folds of the stomach if you read this line you are not able to open the folds of the stomach in endoscopy go for the shirus carcinoma as the answer go for the shirus carcinoma as the answer go for the shirus carcinoma as the answer fine shirus carcinoma as the answer now if the Borman classification was for morphological appearance. Fine. Lauren classification is practically based on microscopic appearance and the behavior. Fine. You don't need to go into the details, but just remember one thing if you can see the diffuse type. The diffuse type is more on the congenital features, more on the genetic makeup, more on the genetic makeup. Whereas intestinal is more on the environmental risk factor, more on the environmental risk factor. You see, because it is because of genetic makeup, it will present in younger age group. Intestinal will present with increasing age. Men are more exposed to occupation occupational carcinogens fine that is why that is why intestinal type is more common in men so that is why you know it is the word first word is environmental here the first word on the opposite side is familiar let me erase the ink so that you can see let me erase the ink so that you can see there fine now what are the clinical feature so if they say recent onset dyspepsia in a middle age man recent onset dyspepsia in a middle age man the answer would be carcinoma stomach somehow fine then your patient can present with trochio syndrome there could be multiple thrombophlebitis multiple thrombophlebitis there could be a canthosis degree cans i mean you you could experience i mean you could check your patient is having hyperpigmentation in the axilla and the groin axilla and the groin fine chronic blood loss can cause iron deficiency anemia chronic blood loss can cause iron deficiency anemia your patient can develop multiple peripheral neuropathy multiple peripheral neuropathy multiple peripheral neuropathy 
Fine. So diagnostic investigation of choice is endoscopy and biopsy. Endoscopy and biopsy is the diagnostic investigation of choice. For the T staging, we have to use endoscopic ultrasound. For the T staging, we have to use endoscopic ultrasound. Endoscopic ultrasound. Fine. Now. Crozier sign may be seen if the cancer has spread. If the cancer has spread, fine. We also get to see swelling or the presence of lymph node in the bloomer shelf. Bloomer shelf, fine. So, what is bloomer shelf? That is recto vesicle pouch recto with cycle pouch you get to see Krukenberg tumors Krukenberg tumors are there in the ovary Krukenberg tumor are there in the ovary sister Mary Joseph nodules sister Mary Joseph nodules are present around the umbilicus this is when the cancer has spread this is when the cancer has spread with to the different organs so the treatment is either you perform subtotal or total gastrectomy with minimum five centimeter margin with minimum five centimeter margin fine as a part of chemotherapy we can use Cunningham Royal Mars 10 regime Cunningham Royal Mars 10 regime fine what is that the chemotherapy is ECF ECF fine that is epirubicin cisplatin 5 fluorouracil 5 fluorouracil 5 fluorouracil fine 5 fluorouracil fine you can use palliative surgery if the tumor is inoperable for example you can use Tanner's operation, you can use Davin's bypass, Davin's bypass, Davin's bypass. Naturally, you can use uh, uh, palliative tubes like SEMS, you can use Sotar tube, fine, Sotar tube, etc. You can use, fine. Now, <laughs> I always want to finish the class in time but naturally this class is usually extended even though it is supposed to be a concise class no problem all time is yours you have the option whether to watch it or not fine now we move to this next tumor gastrointestinal stomal tumor gastro intestinal stomal tumor so it arises from cells of kajal fine so which are gastric pacemaker cells gastric pacemaker cells fine just a second fine so what is specific about them they express cd 117 cd117 and also cd34 cd117 and cd117 so two third of the gist they occur in the stomach so that is their most common site most common site and most of them are solitary most of them are solitary fine so most common presentation most common presenting feature there is bleeding most common presenting feature there is bleeding fine so they spread 
by blood they don't spread by lymph node so lymph node dissection is unnecessary lymph node dissection is unnecessary right so if you are doing the surgery you are just going to cut the tumor with a patch of normal tissue lymph node dissection is not required lymph node dissection is not required investigation of choice is contrast ct you must keep in mind that biopsy oh sorry endoscopy endoscopy is not helpful endoscopy is not helpful in making the diagnosis endoscopy is <laughs> endoscopy is not helpful in the diagnosis fine what are the other option Imatinib missiles. See, let's not get into this best faculty game. Fine. I'm really thankful for your love and affection. But the only thing is, see, I'm just doing it out of my affection for you guys. Fine. So, uh, if someone doesn't like it, it is my bounden duty to check what add, what, what else we can do. Fine. So, that was only, you know, my option there. So, for resistant cases, we can use sunitinib we can use sunitinib now when this is there let's see what is there even though this is a topic of intestine but now when it is open in front of us let's see meanwhile you can uh, be ready with your queries we are about to finish in two three minutes what is that wilkie's syndrome wilkie's syndrome you see when the patient loses weight too fast this mesenteric pad of fat is gone Fine. And then what will be happen? What will be happening? The duodenum will be compressed between superior mesenteric artery and abdominal aorta. Fine. So, what is Wilkie syndrome? Wilkie syndrome is compression of third part of duodenum. Third part of duodenum between superior mesenteric artery and aorta between superior mesenteric artery and aorta so your patient will develop postprandial fullness and vomiting after the meals fine so what do we advise the patient to lie prone after eating to lie prone after eating this is common in females you know who are wearing tight clothes like corset fine now what is the treatment we don't do anything to the blood vessel treatment is duodeno duodenostomy for or duodeno jejunostomy duodeno Jejunostomy. Fine. So basically, the point which I'm trying to convey is we are not going to say anything to the duodenum, anything to the superior mesenteric artery. Let's say before surgery, the order from anterior to posterior was that there was superior mesenteric artery. After that came the duodenum and then came the aorta. After surgery, after surgery, what will be the order now? The order will be slightly different. This is anterior. This is posterior. Now it will be duodenum. After that will be superior mesenteric artery. After that, there will be aorta. After that, there will be aorta. This is the kind of arrangement. This is the kind of arrangement which we aspire to make. Fine. So that will fix us. That will fix us our problem. Fine. Kajal, bete. SBR 12, it is uh, Kajal. Kajal. Gastrointestinal cell of Kajal. Mesenchymal cells of Kajal. Right. So that practically brings us to the end of whatever we wanted to discuss in the topic of. Uh, in the topic of stomach in the topic of stomach fine so any queries please i'm uh, waiting for you guys here
live chat part is gone. Live chat part, why is it gone? Sinosis and cuffing can present. Yes, yes, yes. Sinosis and cuffing can present. Do it. Yeah, it should. Okay, late dumping. Yeah. Now, we know that concentrated food is entering the jejunum. Concentrated food is entering the jejunum. Fine. Now, because concentrated food is entering, there will be sudden spike. There will be sudden spike of the dextrose levels. Because of sudden spikes of dextrose level, there will be sudden increase in the insulin levels. Fine. So that will bring down the levels of glucose, hypoglycemia. That is a feature of late dumping. Perforation. You see, perforation first it will cause the ingress of acid. That means it will cause chemical peritonitis. Then it is going to cause resolution of the symptoms and then it is going to cause bacterial peritonitis. Right? Vijay Pradab ji. Thank you. Thank you, Ashish, sir. I'm so glad. Right, so I'll end the lecture as of now. Tudenal atresia. Tudenal atresia. So what will happen in the duodenal atresia? That third part of the duodenum, third part of the duodenum will not canalize properly, will not canalize properly. Fine. Now you see the bile is entering the second part, bile is entering the second part. So that will give rise to bilious vomiting, that will give rise to bilious vomiting and it will give rise to characteristic double bubble appearance, double bubble appearance. Rudenal atresia, it will fail to canalize, it will remain like a cord. Right. Thank you. Thank you so much, buddy. Treatment is like will uh, will will basically uh, leave this part. Let's say, okay. You see, we'll just bypass this part. We'll join this with this. We'll just bypass this part. This part will be brought here like this and then we will join it like this. Bypass, total bypass. Nithi Beta, I'm not, to be very honest, I'm not aware of that. I'm not aware of that actually, pulmonary chondroma. Seriously, I'm in, uh, <laughs> to be very honest, I'm not aware of it. I'm in, uh, 
uh, I cannot uh, basically recall anything about it as of now. But naturally, I will explain it in the next lecture. There, if you are there in the next lecture, I will explain Nidhi. But I will explain in the next lecture. Right, so till we meet again.